I think it could not have come at a more opportune time. I request uh, Mr. Shinto to get going with the session. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, thanks a lot for setting the context. Uh, in fact, you know, we have a great audience, not only here, we have a lot of people watching this live from uh, electronics for you. So I thank uh, the guys from electronics for, for setting it that. Uh, so I already gave the background of this topic. Everybody talks, there are no jobs. But then on the other side, you know, if you ask uh, companies who are looking for candidates, they said we don't get candidates. So there is something going wrong. Uh, we just need to analyze that part. It's not, not all negative. A lot of things are happening. Probably uh, people are not aware of what is happening. That could be the reason that, you know, uh, they don't prepare in the right direction. They miss that opportunity which are coming up. Yeah, I'll just click uh, to uh, you, know, you all to drive through the history of uh, you know computing. If you go through the industry when we all started our career, na, all were working on PCs. But today you find a place where there are PCs available, you don't hear about it. So something has changed in the last 30 years. The reason is a concept called pervasive computing. Pervasive computing means computing for anyone, anytime, anywhere. That's exactly what you mean by policy computing. So this has changed uh, the where all uh, the computing devices have been deployed from a PC context. When I was doing my engineering, 99% of the processors used to go to PC market. Today, it's completely ultra. Almost 99% goes to the non-PC market. So that's because of the impact of policy computing. It also talks about you know demand for increased efficiency. So I want efficiency in my car, in my mobile phone, my washing machines, wherever I go, I want increased efficiency. I also want intelligence. All my systems need to be efficient. How do I bring in intelligence through so efficiency? I bring in through increased intelligence. So that's another shift that has happened. And you are seeing the connectivity how it evolved from wireless to wire to wireless and we are talking about you know wireless charging so that's the world which we are living in and uh, mobility it's again connected around the same thing so this is i would say a, a history of uh, the tech industry which has been evolving over a period now another interesting trend which has happened in the last couple of years is wherever you go software is there and the content of software in all your systems is increasing like anything now we are reaching a level where you can have a router, just software based router. You don't need a hardware router. I can run a router on my software itself. So we are reaching a level called, you know, software defined system, software defined everything. We go to Cisco, they call it software defined everything. That's what they, they talk about. It. Now, uh, if that has happened for software, something would have happened for hardware also, right? Hardware has become very complex nowadays. The systems are very complex. You have millions and millions of systems getting into one chip itself. So that adds to the complexity at, at that level. Now, one more thing has happened. Today, you all hear about, you know, Industry 4.0. This has got a huge impact on the job market, the shift what is happening today. You all know the Industry 1.0, the Industrial Revolution started with the steam engine in UK. And from there, uh, you went up to productivity improvement through uh, production of electricity. So from there, you went to automation, the industry 3.0. Whatever you have seen in all these days was about industry 3.0, which is basically factory automation, mass production. And there also you have seen as phase uh, where jobs were replaced by automation. So that was happened in 50s and 60s, the automation revolution that was kicked up. Today, we have another wave of job loss, some people are talking about it. It is an evolution. It is exactly like what has happened on the shop floors in 50s and 60s through automation. Now, we have another era called industry 4.0, where many jobs are getting replaced. I don't know, today people have seen a video in the morning is around, rolling around in Bangalore about a robot teaching in an international school in Bangalore. A teacher has been replaced by a robot teaching in the class. 
classroom. You can imagine what is that is going to have an impact when the teachers are getting replaced by robots. What would be the emotional connective with the students? Don't ask. But then that is what has happened. Now you have seen the same concept called cobots. Means robots working with the human base on shop floors. I am seeing cobot scenario in schools where the robots are working along parallel with the teachers. So that's the another aspect which we are seeing. So I will just take you through the next level. This is an interesting data about job market. Two, three things you will find it. Particularly you are in Bangalore. The bottom line you will see. Last year, the Bangalore was or Karnataka was not a top performer in terms of providing jobs. This year, we are back. That is because of the dip in software. 2018, software was not a job in it, a provider in this country. Overall, I'm talking about. 2019, you will see software is back. So Karnataka is again back as one of the top, you know, job providers in this country. On the top row, one more thing is you will see the employability of people. Employability of uh, you know, uh, the, our, our people in our country. Slowly there is an increase happening, but still on an average it is below 50%, still in our country. Engineering edu education has got the lowest, to be frank. You know, I don't want to refer the numbers. Among all these things, engineering education has got the lowest number. Again, back to the 4.0. Interestingly, you will see uh, 4.0 is nothing but you know going one step from the automation era to connected intelligent systems. That's what all our word 4.0 means. Now, when you go that route, what happens is uh, you're connecting everything. You have uh, intelligent systems around you. You have a lot of data coming to you from multiple uh, sources. Uh, in fact, six months back, I was talking to a news reader. I asked her uh, in a conference in Mumbai, I asked her, uh, what is your biggest challenge? What is your biggest challenge going forward in your industry? She told me I will be replaced by robots very soon. Interestingly, the very next week, I was in Taiwan. I was watching in TV. In China, a robot is reading a news. English news, she's reading. So what has happened is, the news reader is telling me, uh, today we have real-time data coming in 4-5 screen in front of her. Data about exactly about the viewership, how the viewership is impacting based on what she is telling about the news. So we have the real time data screens in front of her and she has to change the news reading depending upon how it impacts the viewership. So it is only one step. Now if it goes in multiple screens and I am telling you this lady will not be able to withstand the pressure on her to change. Eventually, a computer can do that much faster, much efficiently. So you can imagine what impact it would have in the, you know, the, the TV industry. So here we are talking about, you know, getting exposed to data and the how the data is getting processed. You're seeing what Ambani is saying, data is the new oil. He's just betting on the data oil business. So. We have a lot of influx of data happening and uh, you're getting it processed and you're putting some intelligence on the top of this and I'll talk about that part. Earlier days, uh, this intelligence and calculation used to happen on the cloud. Now we are stopping it there. Wherever your data is collecting, there itself you are putting intelligence, you are analyzing it before you pump the data back to the system. system. Imagine you put some intelligence also into this. You can go to the next level. In fact, two weeks back, I was talking in a conference in uh, Kuala Lumpur, wherein uh, we, I was talking about a scenario where why we should travel in a country, all the way in another country to run a conference. Wherever we are sitting, today the augmented reality is coming, where I can run a conference platform. Uh, this Monday, IESA had a conference in Taj uh, uh, They gave a live demo on how do you run a, a cognitive based capability live conference. People sitting in multiple countries probably talking, interacting together. So, again, last month I was in another automotive uh, CTO conference in uh, Pune. The guy, they said, Why do we need cars? We don't need cars because without traveling, I'm able to get things done. That's the way we are talking about. So, this has got huge impact in terms of uh, the decision making, in terms of our uh, thinking pattern. 
in terms of how do we need to adapt because it's all about you know how do we getting adapted to the changing scenarios your ability to interact with uh, society the concept called uh, social intelligence comes into picture and there are companies nowadays doing analysis on candidates before they hire on their social question they call it sq social question social question means how connected is this prof profile in the market now that analysis i can do further how connected is this guy at the cxo level how connected is this guy at the recruitment circle how connected is this guy at the student circle the data is available so when i want to hire a guy for a cxo profile and if he's all his connections are at the recruitment circle that means he has been applying for jobs all these years and he didn't bring any kind of network at that level so there is a lot of data available based on your social behavior pattern so what throws out be careful because there is somebody is watching there are tools available to track things now going further this is again not my finding this is all from the gartner uh, data from 18 2018 to 2019 you will see a drastic change these kind of changes the gartner forecast sheets earlier days it used to take 5 years minimum Minimum five years it used to take this kind of shift to happen. Today, with one year, you are seeing this change. Fundamentally, two three observations you will see. One, I spoke about edge computing. That means you know, do the computing at the edge level for whatever you do. And then uh, this thing is uh, the edge itself. We are putting to put intelligence. That means wherever the sensors are there. Because this is this is a combination of subjects involving electrical, electronics, computer, communication, a uh, whole lot of subjects comes into this kind of scenarios. So it's not just uh, software and computer science alone. So you have sensors collecting this data wherever the sensor is there. It could be a thermal temperature sensing, it could be a light sensing, it could be you know mood sensing. I mean, I can even sense the mood behavioral pattern of people and predict whether he has got a violent behavioral scenario such cameras have been installed in many western streets today to monitor people whether it's good or bad please don't ask me but that it is already working so when the cameras were getting deployed in delhi streets this was the first question asked me are you putting intelligence back into this to analyze the behavioral pattern of people so you could do that and then we are also talking about you know uh, a scenario where uh, we could have uh, things like Automating the software development process itself. That's where we are going. We have a team internally in my company where we are discussing this part. Where you don't do programming. I'm just sitting in front of the computer and telling my problem. Give me a solution. And uh, based on my descriptions and the words, <laughs> the cognitive algorithms in the back end uh, study my talks, put in my description of problem and check with me. Is this the problem what you are talking about? Uh, yes, the code is done. So if you are uh, you know, thinking that you know, just programming skills are going to take you to future as a software guy, sorry, that's getting automated. So keep an eye, I mean, now what is that, now I'm coming to that area, what is that actually could help us in growing? Just by becoming a you know, line of coding guy is not going to help us. And again, we spoke about you know blockchain kind of technologies. It is evolving very fast. I would say uh, there was a discussion on you know how do we bring supply chain credentials. And I read an article. They talk about you know put blockchain into the supply chain credentials building, and particularly in field like military where they want to track the components from where they are coming. So they are saying that you know, all these guys are on the job to put blockchain technology to track the source of where the chipset or you know components are coming because they want to be sure that you know no fake chipset gets into the aircraft or you know, weapon systems so now the next scenario we are saying you know I'm, i said a lot of opportunities there a lot of opportunities there now as a student or as somebody you know as somebody uh, you know, we have a lot of parents here your kids are saying no we are not filling jobs i'm saying there are a lot of jobs so there is something wrong, there is something going wrong. So the, the real reason is actually there is a big gap, the reality and the, the, the expectation of the employers. In, in fact, you know, 
this Tuesday, I was in uh, NASCOM Engineering R&D. They have a core working group. They are coming with, uh, with uh, something called Sector Skill Council uh, forums. They have a forum called Future Skills. So in that forum, when I was sitting, I said, uh, you know, it is not future skills, it is current skills. Because they prepared these terminologies a year back, and I said, this is no more future, it is current. So maybe six months down the line, one year down the line, I would have to call it past skills. So that, that's the kind of uh, the, the action which is happening. Now the question is actually, can we catch up to this kind of pace change? It is a question mark. Now what we can do is the next action point. If you are working somewhere, I should look at you know how do I upgrade my skills. So that's where actually shorter micro courses, credit courses, very, very focused courses are available today. Companies are doing that. They don't want you to spend six months, one year, do an MS and all those things. Because by the time you complete the MS, that itself is obsolete. So why are you spending two years or three years on that? So just to spend two days, three days, upgrade your skill, upskill on what you're doing. And if you're a fresher, I would say they have more advantage because fresher can jump into an area which is on the upward curve. In economics, there is a principle called the jumping out of the curve. That means something going up. If you are Tuma sitting on that curve itself, by default you will go. Suppose you are sitting on a curve which is already going down, even if you struggle hard also, you will also sink. So he has got an opportunity to sit on an area where you know the curve is going up and also look at uh, where there is high skills are available. So if you look at in the tech industry, uh, you have uh, various types of jobs available. One is actually maintenance. Maintenance jobs to be frank, they will run for years. But sit, Understand you are sitting on an obsolete skill. Anytime the product will die, technology will die, but that as far as the product is running, your job is safe. Then you have something called RD. But now imagine you know how many people are really getting RD jobs? Very few, maybe less than 2% or 1% of the total job market. We do have uh, developers, we have testers. But then if you can find a job which is a bit engineering oriented. Even if it is testing, fine. Even if it is enhancement of a current project, where your engineering skills are currently used, you still have a relevance. But then if you can still upgrading on some you know, upward curve, whatever happening in that particular industry. For example, if you take electrical industry, we have sensors. It's, it's happening in a big way. Being an electrical engineer, if somebody says, I don't know what a sensor, uh, being a computer science guy, if he says, I don't know what is data, I don't know what is ML, then I would say he should not be a computer science guy today. But then this ML AI philosophy, it is going to be a horizontal subject. It is not restricted to computer science guy. It is going to be there with ethical people, with uh, uh, civil people, with anything and everything what we are doing. I said, you know, teachers are getting replaced. So even teachers are not spared. So they probably will be forced to enhance their skill, teaching skills with additional augmented uh, capabilities coming with uh, technical help. Again, this theme. Uh, what? These are two case studies I'm bringing. I use cases. Uh, one I will bring it from the car and automotive industry. Other I will bring it from the, um, the industrial automation. Uh, sorry, industrial IoT space. Today, if you look at the cars which are coming in, I don't know what you observed. Everybody says no cars are getting sold in India. Just do a detailed study on the car market in the India for the last 12 months. Established players are not able to sell a single piece of car. The cars that nobody wants. But then there are some new players entered in the last six months. Their cars are booked in 15 days of launch itself. Something is happening in this market. People are fed up with the traditional cars. So they want additional features, enhanced you know, driver assistance systems, the concepts like ADAS. And uh, the modern cars which are coming, most of them are having more code than Airbus 380. I have some customers, 380 is my customer. So we have seen the shift. 380 code is much more simpler, but the modern car codes are much more complex and more than the size wise also. So imagine the number of you know processing units sitting in a car. Everything is computers and uh, last week I was in a CAA automotive conference in Chennai. The theme which was given was actually how do we do this transition from a traditional car to a next generation car. The biggest challenge was the current number of car players in the world majority will be shut. It is a pessimistic statement. The reason 
the boardroom people are all mechanical guys. With all due respect to the mechanical people, because mechanical is a fundamental subject. But today's cars are not mechanical cars. It is all about electronics and software. So until unless they replace or probably add some electronics and computer science people, at least at least electronics people into their board level, and bring in this change, like the Mahindi guys, they are now really sweating. They find that you know their cars nobody wants. All of a sudden, there somebody else is coming and giving better value proposition. They are taking the market. Now this calls for a different set of skills. Means a person who is currently mechanical should upgrade his skills with a little bit of electronics, a little bit of you know software understanding. How the systems are behaving is a must. Electrical person. So I'm not, I'm not trying to promote computer science as a subject. I'm telling computer subject is going to be a mandatory for everybody. So next question, what is the computer science guy will be doing? This is the next question. Because if everybody is going to learn that part a little bit rather than those kind of stuff, and what is this, what is expected from the computer science guy is the next question mark. He has to find the answer for that because he has to differentiate in the market. Because when he's competing with the guy who knows sensors and so many other things and still knowing computer science. Then if this guy says I know only computers, he has to face a lot of questions from many people. So this shift, if an electrical engineer, if a mechanical engineer is able to understand, and I would say even in the colleges also, many colleges nowadays I sit in the advisory committees. We are telling them, final year projects, please do combine projects from multidisciplinary projects. Get one electrical guy, get one mechanical guy, put one computer science guy, make an intelligent system which is having electrical, mechanical structures. It's an intelligent system that you're building. Companies are looking for such people who can solve innovative uh, ideas. And I think some of you have heard of a concept called full stack programmer. Some companies are doing that. Instead of piece, pieces, I expect you to do the complete thing as far as the product development is concerned. Another example, uh, I'll, I'll, before I go there, I, I'm telling all these systems need to be safe, all these systems need to be secured. So there's a lot of scope for cybersecurity people. Huge demand, I would say. Cyber security is going to be the biggest opportunity in the next five, six years. So if somebody is building that kind of skills, well and good. Another use case. This is going to change the way you're producing, marketing, and selling products. Means traditionally you have a plan. We call it the, the planned automation. And then you have a monitoring system where people are monitoring what is happening in the plant. So control center, whatever they call it. Then we have supply chain. And then we have IT people. Means people are running the ERPs, material management, whole lot of things, employees, uh, you know, payment, uh, HR software, all sort of things. Now the, the current scenario is you are connecting your manufacturing systems with the IT inside to the operation, uh, the outside IoT. So the internet, you are connecting everything. So you have IT which is the traditional ERP, MRP scenarios. You have the OT, the operational technologies, which is nothing but your planned automation related products like your SCADA, DCS, maybe you can put your robots, all sort of things in that shop floor equipment to the outside world. Means to the so-called internet world. What happens is you go to a car showroom, showroom, you are going to tell that fellow, I need a car of this features, color, seat, whatever specifications you want, you can tell. He will show you in your scenario. You can play, place the press the button, place the order. Imagine what could impact the market, how it could impact the market. And imagine I'm able to hack the manufacturing system and make sure that you know payment is also done in the system. The data is updated, database is updated that this fellow has made the payment. I get the car delivered at my home without making any payment. So here also security is going to play a major role. Now again, the challenge is anyone who is trying to fit into this kind of job scenario, if he says, I am an industrial guy, I am a production guy, sorry, companies won't be able to accommodate such a person because they are actually working in a connected world where manufacturing is automated, systems are working in intelligent way, you have uh, IT running in the back end, but IT also has got a lot of data lying in the back end, so a lot of analysis happening. So 
it it needs a, a real engineer I, i use the word a real engineer so that's a differentiation i would say the real engineer is once again back what went wrong with our it revolution in the last 10 15 years is there was no scope for a real engineer anyone who knows the one line or two lines of code is an engineer so that definition is that so this is going to change the way we live and uh, if you don't understand this is what happens robots are going to take up the ball jobs and our man is going to do the you know, sweeping job so this is is a, the, the, the reality it is already happening and it's already forecasted 75% of people above 40 it counts me some of you guys uh within 10 years 10 years in india 75% of people above 40 is going to be either obsolete or jobless it's an alarming uh, statement but then uh, it is already happening and in it industry i think they are going to take the lead already we are seeing a lot of layoffs happening and uh, whether it's good or bad or there's ethical i don't know i don't want to comment on it but it is happening it is a reality what is happening so it throws up challenges not only for youngsters even for senior level people if you don't understand it uh, we face the same problem in our organization we telling people hey boss this is a disruptive change that is happening if you don't wake up you are going to sink our company also so please wake up we we'll shake them make sure that you know they understand this uh, the the shift which is happening so uh my suggestion is actually we have uh, uh, actually I, i run another program called you know called the uh, people influential thought leadership now today if you are a techie if you really want to build your career i would recommend you join us as a worker you know normal engineer an experienced engineer then you grow up again build your capabilities on the engineering side become a subject matter expert from there to become a thought leader from there to become an influential thought leader so if we can somebody can build that level of career path there is enough future available because people are looking for such people but not for people who are actually joining a company and saying i want to become a manager the definition of today's manager will tell you someone who doesn't know anything that has become the definition because in today's in most of the tech companies what is happening is someone joins a job within uh, one year he gets a promotion and uh, five years that 10 years down the line his career is counted how many people are under him not what he knows how many people are i want a 200 people team so all those uh, posts are now getting automated you have uh, work flow work flow automation that is already kicked up so this is something which i think you all need to consider it if you don't do it we are getting obsolete now my suggestion is actually we need to bring all the stakeholders and uh, we I, i missed one bottom line and uh, make sure that you know we encourage the opportunities which are coming there are a whole lot of opportunities happening i mean it's not that you know uh, one sector alone and uh, uh, again i use the word social question it works a lot it means a lot because interaction uh, is something which can help you a lot i uh, wherever, wherever i go i tell people get into linkedin connect with the right right set of people because you you find lot of action happening in linkedin uh in linkedin itself some of us uh, again i don't know if you are aware they do have this forum code you know the mentor thought leader programs uh because i get lot of privilege out of linkedin i, I don't subscribe to linkedin but i get almost everything free so we contribute something back to the community we intern they give us some credit so there are ways for you to grow there are ways there are people who can give you mentoring in social platforms free of cost you don't have to worry too much about it lot of people are available the only thing is we just need to reach out so i just gave you a briefing uh, on exactly what is happening now what we will do is actually we do have a specialist we have lined up about six areas starting from automotive to infrastructure to uh, embedded systems uh, we have uh, aml and then uh, aerospace manufacturing so we have experts right now already here what is what we are going to do next is uh, those who are interested on any of these topics could start interacting with these guys because what i gave is basically a general approach but then as a young engineer or someone who is looking for a career path the next phase is actually very specific to for example i want to build my career in automotive uh, that too in adas or that too in infotainment that too in uh, building an ecu level 
or in an EV. I want to build a battery management system for electric vehicle. You need to speak to a guy who is actually doing it. He can share a lot of uh, you know his experience, how he has evolved in a period, what all things we should know further on that. So thanks a lot. Once again, not only really the people who are attending here, there are a lot of people watching it live from the electronics for you community. I'm sure this video might be there in their website, so more people can watch it. Thank you.